And thank you, everybody. Today is uh, Monday. It's September the um, it's, it's, it's the tenth today, uh, 2012. And coming soon, uh, November 6, 2012, we're having a big election day. And uh, so my name's Thomas with LibertarianProgressive.com, uh, where you can see all the uh, independent and third-party candidate interviews that we've done this year uh, for people running for the uh, House and Senate and and. Uh, uh, and so on for governor as well. Uh, today on the phone we have uh, Scott Rupert. Uh, he's running for Senate out of Ohio. Uh, and uh, so Ohio is one of the states that has a Senate race going on. Um, he is running against uh, Sherrod Brown, who is the uh, Democrat incumbent. And um, uh, and actually did vote for the 2012 uh, National Defense Authorization Act. Um, we'll ask uh, Scott about that in a little bit. But Scott, we usually start off by asking people what uh, motivates them and um, and uh, you, you know what got you uh, into this race here this year in 2012. And we do appreciate you taking the time um, to be here, uh, your accessibility and. Um, and so, yeah, if you could tell us about yourself and what got you motivated, sir, and good to talk to you. Thanks very much, Scott. Well, thank you very much, Thomas, for having me on. I, I, started, I started this back in 2009, early 2009, as a result of the 2008 electoral process. Not necessarily who won or lost any of the races, but as a result of the process itself. I'm, I'm a truck driver, not a politician. I'm a truck driver and a biker. I'm an average American going about the average American day. And in 2008, I was hearing the same thing, quite honestly, that we had heard for so many years from both parties saying, don't let the other guys have their way with you. There are no candidates running for office saying, here's why you should support us. It's their, their message is, here's what's wrong with the other guys. In other words, our electoral process has has been downgraded to an exercise in fear rather than the free exchange of ideas that it's supposed to be. And I set about trying to come up with a way to change that. And the way that I came up with was to encourage ordinary citizens to get involved in the process because nothing is going to change until we do. As long as our choices are A and B, it's enough just to say what's wrong with with your opposition when when we take away the party labels and force things back to the arena of ideas then candidates have to talk about themselves rather than rather than who they're running against i said i started doing this back in 2009 but i attempted to get on the ballot in 2010 as as a independent or non-party candidate it's a good deal more difficult to get on the ballot in Ohio than it is as a Republican or Democrat. The Republican or Democrat candidates need a thousand signatures, a thousand ballot peti petition signatures to get on the ballot. As an independent or non-party candidate, I needed 5,000. Hmm, and in, yeah, in, in 2010, I, didn't, I wasn't able to collect enough signatures to get on the ballot, but I did m meet a lot of people, made a lot of friends who agreed with the uh, with the premise of what I'm doing, and they got involved, and in 2012, we are on the ballot. The, I'm, in light of the things that have occurred since the 2010 election, I'm very glad that I am, because I don't see any way that we're going to get America back on a firm footing within either party. The 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 problems that we're facing today don't fit in either party's ideological box, and neither do the solutions. Now, what are that, some of your solutions that don't quite fit into, you know, the, the box, I guess you could say? Well, with, with regard to our national debt, we're $16 trillion in debt, and neither party will recognize that, that there are valid points to be made on the other side that things need to be cut there because it's a fact we're we're not going to solve we're not going to solve our debt problem simply by uh by reducing entitlement programs and we're not going to solve our debt problem simply by reducing our, our uh, military commitments around the world it's going to take 
people, real people coming together and reasoning through the real problem and coming up with reasonable solutions. And as long as we're, as long as the parties involved, and by parties I mean individuals who are involved in proclaiming the message are identified by an initial, only part of the people are listening. And we really need everyone listening. Yeah, uh, and and so um, now about the military, Spain. You said did, did you just say we shouldn't be policemen of the world? Um, and uh, I guess that's a question. I mean, are we a republic or are we? And should we be an empire? You know, I mean, <laughs> is, is that? Do you think that's a real debate that's going yeah. on in some people? I I, I do. In fact, that we are a republic. Our military, uh, constitutionally, our military's role is to protect the United States. The, the United States, not the world, not not democracy, but the United States. And in fact, I see uh, what I see coming. We really are going to need our military here, our military, not foreign military here in the U.S. Well, what do you, are you, so yeah, I mean, um, I mean, hopefully, well, of course we need it, but hopefully, I mean, do you envision any conflict coming in the or, I mean the well, I'm I'm not going I'm not going that far out, um, but I can see it as a possibility. I, I, if we, you mentioned the National Defense Authorization Act, yeah. and and we can add to that HR 347, the the uh, the bill that created no free speech zones anywhere. That uh, oh, you're right, right. That the uh, Secret Service is is employed. Um, just last month. Uh, with overwhelming support from both the House and the Senate, a bill that I'm going, the full name of it is going to escape me, the Presidential Appointment Something Streamlining Act. I can't remember the whole title of it now. Um, but it essentially gave, gave the President the authority to appoint to high-level positions within the Department of Homeland Security and a number of other agencies, it gave the president the power to appoint those positions without Senate approval, uh -huh. which is just one more way of taking control away from the people. Yeah, I mean, it's horrible. It, it seems like so much of our control is going away, and it seems like the Congress, they're just trying to always avoid responsibility. They, they just want to give it to these departments. They don't want to be responsible for anything. It's like they, they don't they want to get there and not work um, and, uh, and and be held responsible for anything the, the declaration of war and um, the the budgets and you right. you know everything almost um, I mean the National Defense Authorization Act um, I've had heard a couple people call it abominable I mean absolutely just just that abominable I would call it abominable too I mean I'll leave a link under your description of uh, y y you know the votes on that and explaining that a little bit but um, basically it uh, you know allows um, it, it, really it's anarchy it's 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 might makes right and, and it gets rid of the rule of law it allows um, people to be snatched up basically without any um, charges against them indefinitely and um, though that's what it attempts to because it is going through the courts um, I see what I see happening over the last over the last eight eight months or so I see one side, there are places where our politicians do agree, and the things that they agree on are the things that are taking liberty away from the people. I see one side creating mechanisms to lawfully take away our constitutional liberties given the right circumstances, while the other side is creating the circumstances. And that's where, that's where we, we need leaders who are not identified by an ideology who can stand up and say, guys, if we go down this road, it's going to, it's only going to end badly for us. Our government is going to get what they're, what they're after, which is us towing a line. The only way that's, the only way that we can prevent that is if we, the people start working together because we're not as far apart as our elected officials would like us to believe we are. Mm -hmm. When we start talking to each other, uh, and idea, ideology aside, when we start talking to each other, we find that we agree on, on immigration. We agree on welfare reform. We agree on most things, and the few things that we disagree on 
constitutionally, our federal government doesn't have the authority to address. Yeah, and especially like corporate welfare reform. Like, uh, I mean, what about those bailouts in 2008 where you, as uh, most people didn't want the bailouts to go through, yet Congress did it anyways, and we heard the sky would fall if we didn't do it. And, yeah. um, and, uh, and actually, what, one fan, uh, a Democrat that I've been a fan of in, in your state has been Dennis Kucinich uh, for a lot of things. I don't agree with everything he's passed, but, um, but, or, or, but, but a lot of things. And, I, and I, one thing I do agree with is his character and courage to, to, to stand up for, for, for most of the things. Um, and, uh, and he's been warning a lot about civil liberties and actually tried to um, impeach Obama and Bush. <laughs> so um, uh, that's uh, great. And, uh, yeah, uh, so uh, there's, I mean, without, he's not going to be there next year. I mean, Ron Paul's not going to be there next year. There are some other people that are starting to stand up, though, um, but uh, that might take their place. But we, we it, our uh, thing is here, we're doing um, – like 50 plus candidate interviews this year of, of people you might not have heard of yet but uh hopefully you will in in, in the months ahead um in the congress and imagine uh th this is a year we need to take our country back uh, imagine 50 plus senators and congress people elected 2012 that aren't republicans or democrats and that would send a message um, in itself, if they're not also Democrats or Republicans, even if they're ones that you're fans of, um, I mean, if, if, if they're ones you're really, really you know, I, I think, I guess there might be a handful of their ones that I might be fan of, of too, but I mean, it will send a message. I mean, what will happen if, you know, there were like 50 people elected to the Congress? Um, I mean, I, I know just you, if that, that would send a good message too, but if there's actually a you know, like double-digit numbers of independents or third-party candidates who, you know, can at least consider themselves constitutionalists, um, to, you, you know, uh, that, that would uh, really send a message. I mean, it would really start to turn the tide. It would open people's minds, and then maybe in 2014, you know, you'd get some more in the yeah. House or if there's other Senate races going on in that year. Yeah. The, the free market can work the same in politics as it can in every in everything else. I mean, we don't have any experience with a free market because we haven't had one in 150 years. But by but by getting some independent non-party candidates or third-party candidates for that matter. I and uh, and I want to I want to point out I'm on the ballot as a non-party candidate. Right. It's not my objective to create a third party. My objective is to make the two parties that we have obsolete, yeah. or rather to point out their obsolescence. The, that's what you, what you just said yeah, is, call the what I'm, is what I'm accomplishing, that by sending any independent candidate, it will send a clear message to Washington that the people want their government back. Because we're not getting solutions from either the Republican or the Democrat, we get we get a political process that's that's operated in the in the arena of fear rather than the arena of ideas, and we have to change that. Only we can change that. And when they sense or see the competition of an independent or a third party candidate winning an election, and particularly with regard to with regard to what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not claiming an ideology. I'm demonstrating that the Constitution and the free market protects us all from each other. And it does. Yeah, I like that, that free market and metaphor that, for um, the politics, too. That's a good metaphor for yeah. us. Yeah. And, and when they see the competition, I mean, the competition is what, is what brings about the best product at the cheapest price. And it can work in politics, too. When they see the competition, right now, the Republicans and Democrats aren't really competing with each other. They're, they're just going back and forth from one side to the other. It's what we do. One, one election will choose the Republican, and then and he'll disappoint us. So the next election will choose the Democrat, and he'll disappoint us. Yeah, and they're then we'll too ugly. They're like a cartel, um, uh, really. And they've, they're using the government to stifle competition because they do try to, you know, with the signatures and debates and everything like that, which is, um, that's another issue is, is the debates. I mean, it's not an issue just debates, but it's an issue of um, giving people a voice. I mean, right now Congress... Uh, believe it or not, everyone, I, I mean, I, I know this is probably not hard to believe. Some people might even think it's lower, but they have a 10% approval rating. Yeah. And, um, and and the media has like a 17%. Um, uh, 
And, and so, I mean, if there's ever a better time than now, I mean, we, I guess, you, you know, we don't want to wait till they have a 1% because that means, you know, the country's <laughs> going to be in really bad shape. Uh, it's going to be in tatters by then if we don't, um, you know, do something. And we yeah. can. It can be all of a sudden. I mean, it's just as quick as choosing a different product or choosing a different candidate. So all you have to do is make a choice and form others and just um, be done. That's so why I call them the, the, the redundlicans uh, because they're done with and, and the, the dinocrats because they're just <laughs> like the dinosaurs. And um, and there's lots of other names I have them for, for them too, but um, uh, uh, the, the repugnant uh, kins or the repugnant public ants or, or, or the demagogues uh, I mean just sometimes just call the Democrats the demagogues um, but um, now about uh, what, what do you think about do you think uh, the state should be able to regulate um, their own drug policies I know it was a uh, uh, you know a campaign promise broken by Obama um, and I know like wherever you fall like where people should choose on that I, I think most people are feel like um, you know, someone who smoked a joint or something shouldn't spend, you know, years in prison. We already have the highest incarceration rate that it is, more than China, more than, um, and, and it kind of is a corporate welfare now with these private prisons and stuff too. I mean, it, it's it's like, I mean, for harsh crimes, I mean, for where there's vic, where there's a victim in the crime, sure, yeah, there should be a you know a fair right. trial and a, and a rightful punishment, um, and. Um, uh, you, you know, but um, I mean, where do you fall on that? Do you think that should be a state's rights issue, or do you think uh, even beyond that? I mean, what's um, well, yeah. and anything that isn't enumerated in in the Constitution is a state's rights issue. So I do believe that our that our uh, part of our national security is keeping drugs that are on the other sides of our borders on the other sides of our borders because because the money that 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 goes through those cartels finances things that are hostile to the U.S. Beyond that, it is a state's issue. Nearly everything is a state's issue. Our federal government is charged with two things, infrastructure and security. The rest of the things are for the states to, to decide, and if the states get them right or get them wrong, then uh, their populations will will react accordingly. Right, we have and, 50 laboratories of freedom. Like, let's say California legalizes, like, medical marijuana. I mean, th you don't think that there should be raids or DEA or ATF people right. going in there um, raiding them? And, and, and a lot of these things are, like, legitimate issues. I mean, about 50% of people have tried it, and, and there are people who are suffering with cancer and stuff that have been put in jail. Like, you know, they're, like, 70 years old and stuff like that. I mean, that's certainly, I, I don't think... Um, what you know even the intenders of it intended it to, to be like and plus industrial hemp can be grown and that doesn't even have any of the uh, effects of a, a you know a drug um, and then also what about the um, prescriptions of drugs though do you think we should be able to import those from Canada and other places like that or um, I really hadn't I really hadn't given that any thought um, the I suppose that would be a free market issue if, yeah. it's, if they're legal drugs. Uh, right. And and again, the, if the if the premise is sound, the Constitution and the free market, then everything comes out of that. It's there are there are things that that personally I might find ob objectionable, but that doesn't give me the power to legislate on them. I'm running for the U.S. Senate to protect the sovereignty of the state, not to not to assert my will upon the citizens of the United States. Yeah, and even prescription drugs, I mean, some of those can be more harmful than, you know, what they consider illegal drugs. I mean, the war on drugs could be considered the war on some drugs. I mean, look at, like, Oxycontin <laughs> and, and, and stuff. I mean, Oxycontin, that, that's, you, you know, some, you know, that can be really bad news. I know it can really help people if they, you know, have back problems or whatever, but um, it can really be bad news. Um, and, uh, I mean, that's, you, you know, basically, I think, heroin. Um, and um, so it, it's uh, so yeah. Be beyond uh, d drug policy, which really I, I consider more of a civil rights policy, seeing that we do have the highest incarceration rate, even than China or Iran, who we claim yeah. aren't democratic. Um, uh, it's, it's just in, in a, to see. Yeah. In a in a penal system that's that is not that is not administered fairly at all. Yeah. The there are an awful lot of people who have who have found themselves on the wrong side of that equation. And once you're on the wrong side, it's very difficult to get back onto the right side over something as small as as possession. 
And um, what some other issues like oh the Second Amendment? You said um, like oh, what's your feelings on uh, is that um, that's a right that you recognize? Um, should we have any? Do you propose any legislation to um, you know reduce those rights or? No, I I believe the Constitution. I, be, I believe that the founders got it right in the Constitution in the in the Bill of Rights, and I believe that the that the Second Amendment is your right to carry. I, the example that I use is if. If for some reason a gentleman in Oklahoma wanted to wanted to drive to Massachusetts to buy ammunition, he should be able to drive all the way from Oklahoma to Massachusetts with his gun in his holster. Yeah, yeah, just like he can have free speech from Oklahoma to Massachusetts. Right. right? The, <laughs> the the Tenth Amendment the Tenth Amendment says whatever isn't in this document is for the states to decide. What the Second Amendment is in the document. Yeah, and and now um, now here's uh, well, what about um, you d to put on their energy independence? What are your thoughts on uh, you know how we become more? Because honestly, I mean, do you think um, now this is kind of open-ended question? You know, it's it's just more to the audience. But I mean, do you think um, do you think we would really be in Iraq if they they didn't have any oil? Uh, I mean, honestly, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I. I have my it's just a question who knows the answer to that because it, it's it you, you know they don't the fact is they do have oil and we can't yeah. really 100 percent answer that question but it's just a thought do you think we'd even be in the Middle East at all if the, you know none of those countries had oil um I, I mean um uh, well and anyways um and as as an average citizen as without without all the insight that comes from from being inside the beltway there, the answer to that question from my perspective is, I don't know. Yeah. After 9-11, should we have been somewhere? Yes. Should we have been there very long? No. We should have been there long enough to let let whoever know that they made a mistake. Right. And just kick the crap out of them and come home. If we if we did that two or three times, we wouldn't have a, 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 a international terrorism problem in America because other nations would police themselves and see to it that things like that didn't happen. Well, if the way we're going, that we're not going to have to worry regard, about them hating us for our freedoms any longer. So we're not going to have any left, right? right? Yeah. yeah. With, with regard to energy independence, there there is a lot of oil and natural gas here in the U.S., and those aren't our only options either. I don't know if you're familiar with, with, uh, with thorium at all. Yeah, I with, am. Uh, with, I have heard of thorium, T-H-O-R. Yeah. I U M, yeah. I believe it is. Yeah, thorium. Yeah. Yep. And and liquid liquid fluoride thorium reactors are very small and uh, uh, clean, safe nuclear energy that doesn't that doesn't produce a byproduct that's that's conducive to creating nuclear weapons. Totally. If if you haven't heard of thorium, I mean, just um, you know, think character Thor and add a E M I U M at the end or T H O R I U M. Um, it's uh, definitely something worth, you, you know, Wikipediaing or, or looking up on YouTube. It's very interesting. Yeah, it, it's a, too bad it didn't go, you know, a little further. It could have been a whole different landscape. Um, yeah, well, there actually, there actually uh, is a, a company called Flybe, I think it is, who is, uh, F, I think it's F-L-I-B-E, that is uh, working on a project and possibly in Ohio, um, if the, we can get the EPA out of the way to uh, to build those kind of uh, small portable reactors here in Ohio, and the the applications for thorium go far beyond uh, producing electricity. The heat that they produce can can improve our our uh, natural gas and oil production. Give us a, a, a oil product that we can sell to other countries are a natural gas product, the clean natural gas product that we can use here and actually address our debt problem. Yeah, and maybe we could stop, um, you, you know, subsidizing corn um, also for ethanol. Yeah, and yeah, nothing like turning our food into gasoline. Yeah, I mean, actually, they're, they're probably tobacco can be made into ethanol, hemp can. There, there's lots of products that actually can, pretty much any plant material can. That, that, that's what I was going to, that's what I was about to say was I'm, I'm, I'm confident not not being a scientist or anything like that, I'm pretty confident that just about any organic material could be turned into fuel. 
Right, right. So corn, which which we, we, we pretty much depend on for food, I mean, that's just increasing the prices um, for all our food by, by making that specific product. Um, and now, uh, let's see, um, now fracking, I mean, do you think that's something that, you, I guess, or may I guess the states would regulate that if they felt like they needed to or something like that, if they're scared? Yeah, yeah, that, I would say that's a state's issue. And I'd also, I've learned a little bit about about hydraulic fracking out of necessity, as you can, uh, that's, that's what I do. I'm a problem solver. When somebody presents a problem, I go and, and do research on it and then find a way to find a solution. That's, it's, I said, I, I, maybe I didn't say, I drive a truck for a living. I'm, I'm not a politician. I haul cars. I haul cars because every load is another problem to solve. The, and I've done a little bit of research into fracking, not a lot. What I've learned is that is that all of our all of our drilling has always been done by fracking. What's become a problem is the horizontal fracking, and that the, that there are ways to keep it all clean and safe, and that most of the problems exist with the products as, when they're on the ground rather than in the ground. The with regard to to um, to the the drilling that they're doing is far below the water table, and we do need to we do need whatever kind of casing it takes to keep our water table safe. But that doesn't mean that the that the process itself is unsound. Yeah, it, 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 I I don't know a whole lot about it either. I mean, I just have watched a couple of videos, and I, I, I honestly I'd have to research a lot more. I know a lot of people are yeah. concerned about it, though, and um, in in certain places, I yeah. don't know if it's an issue in Ohio or not, but I, I know a couple other places have about it. Well, um, let's see, just going down a couple of issues real quick. I see here that that you are pro life, right? Um, yeah. Any um, okay, and uh, and I and I believe the Constitution is too. That's I, I don't. He did make an exception for the life of the mother, right? Um, right. And, um, and that's his place for the mother and and for the mother and and dad to make. That's not a, that's right. not an issue for the government. And, and now, do you think you don't think? I mean, ra rape would be in the same consideration, or um, no? No, I, I really don't. I I, I mean, for if, <laughs> if someone needs to die in the case of rape or incest. How about making it the perpetrator? <laughs> yeah. Well. Well. And and that. Well. So. Yeah. Okay. So. And and your one of your <laughs> opponents, the Republican, is also pro-life. The Democrat is pro-choice. So I'm sure I'd Brown and um and actually. Yeah. The Republican I never mentioned. Yeah. That's uh Josh Mandel who is a treasurer or something like that. And um. Yeah. Now um also uh healthcare. What what's your thought on healthcare, sir? The the the. Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act needs to be repealed, and not because of its effect on our economy, but because of its effect on our liberty. Mm -hmm. our, our federal government has no constitutional authority to tell the people that they have to purchase a product. The, and, and if it doesn't stop right here with health care, it'll go on to other things. It, and we'll, I mean, we've already lost our free market. We we won't have a market left. Our federal government will just be telling us what we're going to do and not do yeah. if we allow it to stand. Do I think that that states can do those kinds of things? Sure, they can. But again, when a state screws up bad enough, people vote with their feet. Well, yeah, it's and like fifty there are forty-nine others to choose. Yeah. Right. Let, let, let them experiment. Yeah. And with and with with fifty choices, then it's not hard to. Uh, to keep the free market working within government. When we when we come to our national government, to our federal government, we only have one. Oh, and that's, that's and when it's gone, yeah. it'll be gone for a very long time. All right, and, and we actually have 350, you know, somewhat laboratories of, of freedom, I, I guess. And um, now about the rape situation, though, I think what could be a good situation is, like, if someone was raped, um, you know, maybe they could take one of those 
even Ron Paul, who's pro-choice, said that the morning after pill, from his point as a doctor, isn't an abortion. It, it, it's, it's, it's preventing the birth before it even happens. It prevents the conception. What it does is prevents before, you know, the, 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 the male cell goes into the egg. It prevents that from even happening. So it's, it's not an abortion. That's what he says anyways. Yeah, and I, it's so, I, don't, I don't know enough about it. But comment. I would look at that because but, that, that's not, you know, the morning after is, is but, really just another form of birth control. It's, it's not, it, it, there, there is no conception yet at that yeah. point. That's what it prevents. And, um, and that's from someone who's a doctor, Ron Paul, who is pro-life. Um, so, uh, and that's something, you know, if more people knew about that might prevent some, you know, abortions because of rape and stuff like that. So I'm just, just saying it's, it's, uh, you know, maybe in the future it'll be less needed anyways, but, um, social security, what do you think about social security, sir? Um, you have that listed on your site. There's, uh, there's ways to address all of our, all of our problems. I mean, social security, the, the argument that it will be insolvent in, in 2017 or 18 if we don't do anything it, right. well it's that's that's kind of uh in my opinion that's a that's operating on the false premise that there's money there already the the it's already bankrupt we're 16 now, trillion dollars be because they they, they uh, did rate it but yeah well, you're right you're right in real dollars if, yeah. if we if if we're if our nation is 16 trillion dollars in debt and borrowing 46 cents of every dollar that it spends, the idea that there is money in a social security fund is ridiculous. We're essentially saying, I can't be overdrawn, I still have checks left. Now what, what do you think it should, because on some proposals, or like the Simpson Bowles, they said like um, you can just um, basically raise the um, age one year uh, in the next 20 years and that'll keep it solvent for a very long time. I think like Rand Paul's and a couple other senators got together and, and, and they raised it like, you know, two years and like a, a very long time and, and that actually keeps it solvent for a very long time. I mean, maybe you might also propose like an opt-in, opt-out, but what they're proposing um, you, you know, seems to be at least something that would make it solvent again. I mean, would you go along the lines of that or, or something else? Uh, uh, again, we're, we're operating on the assumption that there is any money. And as I said, if we're $16 trillion in debt, there's no money anyway. The, <laughs> we, do I, does that mean that, that everyone who's collecting Social Security shouldn't get a, isn't going to get a check tomorrow? No. But the idea that it's not already insolvent is just more smoke and mirrors. The, I think that if we, uh, again, bringing this back to a state and even local level, if, if those programs are administered locally, the, Social Security is more than just taking care of the elderly. If that's all Social Security was doing, there'd be plenty of money. Okay. But there are an awful lot of people collecting, and I group I group entitlement programs and all of the all of the different social programs together. The, if those were all being administered even locally, where we can see where the where the fraud and where the abuse is, all of those programs would be a lot cheaper to administer. Not to mention. Washington doesn't really possess a tool for addressing any problem. It only possesses the ability to create bureaucracies. And bureaucracies don't have the problem, don't have the capability of solving problems, only of spending money. Yeah. So the closer we bring all of these things to the local level, to, the closer the solution gets to the problem, the cheaper it is to administer. I understand. I understand. And that could be a very true point. I mean, maybe, you know, Social Security could be administered at, you know, the local level. Um, and uh, I, I mean, I know a lot of people would be, you know, out of a home without it right now because of the situation they're in. I mean, and, and like maybe you're right, like you said, if it was just retired people and not, you know, a lot of other situations, then um, then then it would be solvent. And, and there's ways we need to get more solvent again. I, I mean, instead of uh, borrowing, you know, like you said, 40 plus cents out of every dollar. And um uh, it's it's a tough situation. I mean, it, it's it's uh, you know there's a lot of decisions we're going to need to be making, and we need to make them. I mean, I mean without a doubt. Um, yeah. and, and 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 that comes back to being able to reason with. I mean, to do the things that need to be done, a lot of people are going to be upset. Everyone's going to be upset. We need people who can 
address everyone, who can reason with everyone. And I'm not saying that I'm that guy. I'm saying that by that by winning an election as an independent candidate, I'm opening the door so that those people can emerge. You know that's true. It's a long-term process. I mean, it's 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 or it, it's it's a longer-term process. It's not immediate. It's not a quick fix. It's not a get-rich-quick right. scheme. I mean, yeah, yeah you if will I, be doing a lot I, and championing a lot of things that will also open the gateways to a lot of others as well. And, um, and right. If I if I win an election, if I win in November, when I win in November, Social Security is not automatically going to be administered at a local level. Our, our military isn't, all of the bases that we have overseas aren't going to automatically close. But those are all things that, that we can work towards. And I, I said at the beginning why I started doing this to, to open up the process to ordinary individuals. The, if, you look, if you looked at my website, you've learned things about me that you won't learn about other candidates. That, that I am an ordinary guy, I'm a truck driver, I didn't spend my life preparing to be a politician. And consequently, there are things that I don't necessarily want people to know. But they're out there anyway. Well, because the real, problem, the real problem is that statesmen, the, the people who would make those good leaders that everyone will listen to, aren't involved because they don't have the stomach for the process. Yeah, I'm, work it, it, I'm working to change the process. All right, that's 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 a good point. You're looking to change the process, which actually sometimes we have to do that before we can actually change the laws and the policies. And although you might affect some of them in a lot of good ways, plus it will send a strong message. I mean, so you might help other third-party independents, smaller groups um, that are trying to, uh, you know, public organization groups, uh, civil liberty groups, and, and, and et cetera. Um, and uh, there's, I'm trying to see, you have term limits on there. Um, you have um, the uh, Bill of Rights, which, you know, we kind of went through earlier, um, foreign policy, energy independence, earmark spending, uh, which I assume that you're against earmark spending, right? So Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm, against, I'm against any spending that, that doesn't address infrastructure or security because our federal government doesn't possess those roles constitutionally. The... Again, states can do all that. Federal government cannot. And if federal government were only doing the things it's constitutionally authorized to do, which is protect the United States of America, not the world, and provide infrastructure to the states so the states can do commerce, yeah. it would be very cheap to operate. Yeah, and, and, and all of those dollars that aren't being wasted in Washington would be available to the states. Right, and you also mentioned deregulating uh, a little bit of the commerce to uh, make it easier for the states to trade against each. Uh, I mean, trade with each other, not against right. each other, but with each other. And um, and also now, the federal government does have a role in protecting people's civil rights um, it, as well. Like if, if one state said, you, you know, like you know, certain people can't vote or something. I mean, right. of course, the federal government would step in there. And so the Bill of Rights covers them all. And then if it's like you said, if it's not in the Constitution, and and pretty much if people look at the Constitution. It does cover everyone nowadays with everyone's rights now, you, you know, right. women have a right to vote and, and all that. And I would say, I mean, now, um, it's, I mean, we could probably make that even stronger where, you know, maybe make an amendment where it says, you know, all men are created equal, maybe change, like, add an, <laughs> add an amendment that says where it says men, we mean all people or, or all people that yeah. are free thinking for themselves. Uh -huh. and. But, it's the Declaration of Independence that says all men are created. Oh, it's the Declaration. Okay, I guess. It, well, that's the spirit of the Declaration. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah. well, I'll have to reread my Constitution again. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, there's uh, something else here. Uh, well, what we usually ask also is just to get um, a little bit of, um, you, you know, your thinking process, um, is what are some of your favorites, um, whether you like them or not, just the interesting, I, I, I should maybe instead of say favorite, interesting figures um, that are living now or in the past um, that uh, you, you uh, find interesting and, and for what reasons, why also, uh, Scott? Well, with regard to now, Ron Paul, of course, and, and Justin Amash, I'm a I'm a, a, to the degree that I have that I'm able to keep up with him. I'm a big fan of of what he's doing, the way that he communicates with people through Facebook, yeah. and and lets everyone know why he votes the way he does. 
That's great. Yeah, he really, every everything he does, he puts it out there. I mean, he's like Mr. Transparency, I guess, you know? I mean, that yeah. would be a good way to describe it. Yeah, very open candidates, yes. And, and he's an educator. He's, he's educating the people. He's saying, I voted no on this because, or I voted yes on this because. He doesn't just, he doesn't just, he's not just out there attacking. Right. He, he's reasoning with people, and that's what we need. Yeah, very we, interactive, too. Yeah, and, and what's interesting is that uh, is that he votes with Democrats as often as he votes with Republicans. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of throwing that out there. It's not like a statistical number that I can point to and say, right. see, he's, this is equal. I'm just saying that, that, that he's cast votes. He's cast votes with both sides, and that's what we need, is people who will stand on principle. The... Um, with regard to past, George Washington is my hero. He's he's who I'm trying to be in this campaign. He warned us against yeah. um, parties as well, political um, parties. Exactly. In, in his in his farewell address, George Washington said, "He's." And I'm going to paraphrase. He said, "I appreciate you guys uh, letting me do this. I hope that I did a good job for you. I've had enough. I'm going home. And maybe it's none of my business, but here's a few things that you should know." if you want to protect this constitution that we have. He said this constitution is a great thing. We can be a great nation. But there's a few things that we have to do to assure that happens. He said we have to maintain a strong defensive posture, mind our own business, and avoid party politics. And you're right. And he also did give uh, two references to, like, standing armies or something like that as well um, to, 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 you know, be watchful about that and also yeah. warn us about fake patriotism. And he's given a lot. I mean, there's, you know, he has a lot of stuff to say, actually, that that's um, been carried down. And, um, yeah. And, and interestingly, that his farewell address was not an address to Congress. It was printed in a Philadelphia newspaper. He's telling the people what we need to do, not... Not, not the politicians. The Constitution makes it easy for us to do that. The politicians have made it difficult. Yeah, I'm Constitutionally, there are only two requirements for any of us to, to run for the Senate or for the House, and, and that's age and citizenship. Yeah. Everything else has been placed on us by politicians. Yeah, and that goes, I mean, you, you know, uh, the, it, it, what do you think about um, now? You mentioned um, the, what, the thing I forgot to mention before was uh, consumption tax. Getting rid of like now that would be a boom to business. I think I agree with the consumption yeah. tax or the some people call it the fair tax. Some people call yeah. it just this national sales tax. But it's not. You don't believe like a nine 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 like Herman Cain was saying. No. I mean, just one of those. Um, it's we don't need like an income tax and a sales tax, right? So, no, absolutely not. They uh, uh, regardless of what you call it, the fair tax or or a national sales tax or whatever, not a value added tax, right. but but a, a a tax paid on the things that we buy gives the people power over over our. You taxes. Imagine how many businesses it, would be coming. It over. injects yeah. it injects the free market into tax policy because when taxes are too high, we can choose not to buy things. Yeah. We can. When and the example that I use with with regard to myself, I'm still trying to trying to solve a problem with the IRS that that originated from uh, uh, trouble I had with the truck back in 2007. Crank broke, cost me thirty five thousand dollars to fix my truck. And of course, if I don't fix my truck, I'm not going to have any income. So I used my income tax to to fix my truck. We're still trying to, to come to an agreement with the IRS as to how I give that money back to them. With a consumption tax rather than an income tax, I could have made the decision not to buy things so that I could use that money to fix my oh, there There's so much. And, I mean, imagine everyone, like, I mean, there's less paperwork people would have to do. I mean, I think prices, it, it would make, take a little, there'll be a little transition, but they would eventually adjust, and um, it'd be so much simpler. I mean, talking about streamlining, cutting out the red tape, um, I right. mean, this would really let people go on turbocharge. Um, people would be right. able to start up businesses so much easier. Imagine this as an advertisement to the world and all the, their businesses and scientists and inventors and stuff, we would be actually, I mean, besides, well, we'd be the only industrial country in the entire 
world, I mean, in the entire world that, that wouldn't have an income tax. I mean, wouldn't that be like, I mean, and well, I, everybody I, would I, be here. I think we would have an immigration problem of, uh, you know, businesses coming over here, to be quite honest, after a couple of years, once they saw how it started working. And yeah, I mean, we would be everyone, they would want to come here or pe other countries would probably start emulating the same after a while. But, um, but at, at the, you know, we, there would definitely be a flood of, uh, uh, ingenuity uh, coming hitting yeah. the shores here, and um, so yeah, that yeah. would be very exciting. And it is, in fact, the only tax that truly is a fair tax because then because the, everyone has to pay. No one everyone pay. Yeah. that everyone pays. The wealthy pay more in taxes yes. because they consume more. The middle class, Plus we, 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 have, we all those, pay what we can. But but the, the people, the wealthy does does you know even well. The really, really wealthy now, like the mid-sized wealthy, yeah, they do pay a lot. But the people that are like Warren Buffett and stuff, they, they don't really even pay that much. So they right. would actually end up paying even a higher percentage probably, you could yeah. argue. And, um, and so, uh, yeah, it would be good all, all around. I mean, less paperwork, a lot easier for businesses to, to hire people and stuff too. And um, uh, there would be less paperwork, for, you know, for having employees right. and stuff. I, I mean, it just... It would be uh, such a... And how much productivity is wasted in America on paperwork today? Uh, yeah, yeah a lot, uh, too, too much, uh, too much, way too much. And, um, well, great. If you want to learn more, it's Scott Rupert, S-C-O-T-T-R-U-P-E-R-T.com. I'm definitely trying to make an impact here. I mean, we can make an impact. I mean, I would say, you know, is do we need another person who's going to run for the NDA? That's that's your, um, I guess, your incumbent um, person. And then when you compare him to the Republican who's left, um, I mean, it sounds like you, you know, like like you said, with, with the, you're going to have the spirit of kind of like how Justin Amash was doing, um, his uh, his interactivity with the constituents and. Uh, like, uh, you know, a really good guy and um, just, um, you know, sticking to the Constitution. Of course, we're not all going to agree on 100% of everything, but I think, you know, the spirit of uh, the Constitution, the spirit of the Renaissance is there, and, and you know, the, the, spirit of, the spirit of the Declaration of Independence is there. Um, and I would say um, all people, but you know, but but I definitely think the Constitution and Declaration goes hand in hand. I mean, the Declaration is just as important because that's, well, that's I, the I'm spirit of the Constitution. I'm, I'm convinced that uh, that Thomas Jefferson did mean all people. No, I was uh, just, just kidding a little bit, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, but but I, I think that wouldn't be a because that would clear up a lot of the, you, you know because um, things that that way you, you know that would clear up for a lot you know like the Civil Rights Act and stuff. Now you could say you know the, the, it wouldn't be as much needed because now it would actually you know be even more explain in the Constitution that, you know, everyone, no matter what, um, has the exact same rights and, and it's there um, and written in there, agreed upon, voted upon. And then, um, so that would just make it even stronger, bigger tense. Um, and it would be just like a one sentence amendment. Um, but, um, and that's just my own idea. I did. But anyways, uh, it's been a pleasure. Is there anything I forgot to mention in our closing uh, minutes here, Scott? Um, I mean, it's been very good to talk with you today. Thanks for time it's been a pleasure talking to you i'd like to encourage people to uh to if you listened and liked what i had to say if it makes sense to you that we the people have to get control of our government take it away from both parties and and restore it to independent thinkers because it was independent thinkers who founded our, our country it's going to be independent thinkers who save it uh, go to scottrupert.com and make a donation the I don't need nearly the resources that the Republican or the Democrat need because, quite honestly, the Republican and the Democrat are working for me. The Republican is telling everybody why they shouldn't vote for the Democrat, and the Democrat is telling everybody why they shouldn't vote for the Republican. And they're both right. Uh, right? <laughs> yes, they are both right. That's, uh, and, and I'm not running against them. I'm not running against the Republican or the Democrat. I'm running against the division they represent. And you're not going to be like a like some of both of them have different issues. Both of them are I'll just say as lapdogs to certain special groups, whether it be the military con industrial complex, the the big pharma, um, you, you know, whatever. Yeah. Pick your choice. There's tons of groups. And and if you want someone who is um, you, you know might not agree with everything that you believe in, but but you know really big priority issues. Um, who like he said is going to set the stage. Uh, who's going to be honest, independence? Who's going to have an open? Um, 
you know, I guess like an open door congressional <laughs> policy, it seems like, then uh, this is the way to go. This is the year yeah. 2012. Uh, make it a November to remember. Um, and uh, Scott, it's been a pleasure. I'll say goodbye to you after this uh, interview real quick. And um, again, I do appreciate your accessibility and, and, and your time and, and hearing your thoughts today, sir. And good luck on November 6, 2012. And hopefully we'll see you in the debates, right? So. One, one more. I hope so. Uh, we're still waiting for that invitation. Right. We're trying to put pressure on them to, to include us. Um, one more thing about the Constitution, the beauty of it is that it does protect us all from each other. It ensures domestic tranquility by basically saying your federal government doesn't have the authority to address most issues, so you might as well all get along. Yeah, the one thing people always but, go back to is the Constitution. I mean, if people are really, even the people that tend to criticize it, whenever they're the ones being attacked, they always claim first. I mean, this is my constitutional right. So we all know how important it is, and, and, yeah. and it is something that, that unites us all together. Um, it, it's, it should. The, the, both parties have parts of it they, that they cherish, yeah. but neither party cherishes the, the entire document. And the entire document protects us all. It's important that the whole of the Constitution be, be cherished, because if if one part of it falls, the whole thing falls. And we, constitutionally, we have been given the power by our founders to protect our Constitution from our government, just as our Constitution protects us from our government. Well, sometimes we need a, we a little get bit of too. unity when, when, when things really get bad. I mean, if we keep electing the lesser of two evils for too long, um, like 20 years, 30 years, that might as well equal one really bad evil, you know? Um, and it's just spread out in 30 years yeah. or so. And, and, and that's, yeah, things aren't, I mean, just look at the State of the Union. It, it's time for a change, and, and not just any change. I mean, someone that actually does, um, will take their oath to the Constitution to defend it, to protect Absolutely. it, uh, you know, um, sincerely and seriously. And um, so, um, yeah, what do you know what, well, what cha what media channels do you know are the debates going to be on? People need to call their local um, media channels, right? As in, actually, uh, the newspapers that are responsible for putting the um, debates together, the Ohio News, Ohio News Organization, uh, consists of eight papers, the Cleveland Plain Dealer, the Cincinnati Inquirer, Columbus Dispatch, Akron Beacon Journal, Toledo Blade, and there are three others who, that I can't Okay. I well, can't those recall. are some good ones. They can Con contact those or the City Club or, or any any of your top radio shows if, if anyone's listening yeah. in them and, and it seems pertinent to make a comment call in and say, hey, what about the other candidate in the U.S. Senate race? Yeah, what about the one who doesn't have a 10% approval rating in, in, in whole? What about, like, you know, the American populace now, more than even Democrats, Republicans, identify themselves as an independent? Exactly. Uh, I mean, there's absolutely no excuse. This is maybe one of the reasons why they have a 10% approval rating. They're scared right. of uh, competition. They're scared of debate. So what they do is try to be a, you, you know, we need to, um, you know, in a sense, by the free market, trust bust this two-party system. And... Um, and, uh, and, and you know, vote them out of there, I think. But, um, well, Scott's been... Indes a, independents yeah. are the largest voting bloc in the country. If we can, if we can get behind independent and non-party candidates, we can take our government back. But we have to stop allowing the fear that the Republican and the Democrat use to keep us in line from affecting our vote. Instead of choosing the candidate you think can win, choose the candidate who should win. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's uh, decisions made on fear is basically the voting the lesser of two evils, and, and yeah. we see where that brings us sixteen trillion dollars of all our civil liberties um, on the uh, you, you know endangered species list, and uh, and, and the list goes on. Um, and um, special interests getting richer and richer, and 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 all of us getting the short end of the stick. It's just as simple as making a decision, folks, um, and, and sharing. Uh, your reasons why. Well, Scott, uh, th thank you again, sir. And, and again, Scott, S-C-O-T-T, -T, Rupert, R-U-P-E-R-T.com. Thanks, sir. Thank you.